Okay. Sometimes it's necessary to point out the bugs or the glitches that exist in people's brains. A lot of us think conventionally that noise lives in the shadows. It's like, well, yeah. Now, most people don't know that ISO is not connected to exposure in any way, shape, or form in digital photography. It is in film. It is an actuality in film, obviously so. But not in digital photography. No, we're not talking about ISO here. We're going to be talking about noise. Um, the only thing ISO is for, of course, is an applied gain, is for letting you adjust the true exposure of your shot. Let's just forget about flash photography for a second. However, that's vitally important. Um, shutter speed, aperture, everything is gain and time. The actual true exposure triangle is uh, gain and time and SNR, a signal to noise ratio. Gain, of course, being your aperture. And of course, there's native gain on the sensor, but that's a very minuscule thing we don't have to worry about. Time, obviously, being shutter speed. What ISO does, obviously, if you need to capture the action in low light, you need to crank up the uh, ISO. That'll let you have like a hand, -held, hand holdable uh, exposure. Well, most people understand that, but we think, how are we going to apply that to noise? Noise comes from several different places. Noise specifically is due to bad SNR, signal to noise ratio. Obviously, we do know that noise lives in the shadows. We also know about the dynamic range of our camera, larger photo size, better efficiency of a camera. Um, so noise is not just in the shadows. There's specular noise due to high ISO and bad signal-to-noise ratio. It's kind of like tuning in a bad radio station. You just have low fidelity on the signal, right? Remember the Dolby things that used to start before a movie back in the day? They would play that really funky uh, intro and talk about having Dolby sound. Um, there's no difference between uh, radio and uh, how your digital camera works. It's all electromagnetic radiation and signal-to-noise ratio. Uh, shadow noise, of course, is due to a bad SNR at any ISO. Um, this is the primary reason you want to expose to the right. ETTR, if you don't know about ETTR, exposing to the right, you uh, should look it up. There are tons of articles out there you can read about exposing to the right. What you're doing is you're squeezing your captured image to the point of clipping your specular highlights. You're actually using the most out of the dynamic range of your camera by exposing to the right so you have as little noise as possible. It depends on the dynamic range of your camera, the capabilities of your camera, also the micro contrast and true output of your lens. You have the same camera, but you have different efficiencies of lenses. Obviously, primes are better um, in most cases. However, modern primes have gotten as bad as zooms. There used to be a point of delineation where people knew why the hell they wanted a prime lens. Like, why the hell do you want a prime lens and the zoom covers everything? It's like, well, because a prime renders better. Those lines have been blurred, unfortunately, um, not by an enormous extent, but by a great extent today. We have really high element count prime lenses that have super corrected for everything. And so we have these expensive prime lenses, which are absolutely ridiculous and don't render any damn better than a freaking zoom lens does. The simplicity is divinity is applicable to the very reason for reason, excuse me, the very reason why a prime lens should exist. But this is about... Uh, Noise, so noise is not just in the shadows. Noise is both in the shadows. Uh, it is specifically is about bad uh, signal-to-noise ratio. If you crank your ISO up, you got noise issues, not only your midtones, but also your speculars, uh, but also your highlights, because all you're doing is applying a post-captured uh, gain amplification uh, to the uh, captured uh, signal that you had and the composition of the shot that you took. So all this is a really important reason why you expose to the right. Another reason why of having a light meter too is that if you actually calibrate it for your camera, what it does is let you squeeze all the orange juice, um, if you will, analogously of the dynamic range of your specific camera. Because when you look at a histogram of your image, you're looking at a histogram of the embedded uh, JPEG inside the RAW file, or if you, even if you're a JPEG shooter, you, you know, the histogram, well, not a JPEG shooter, but if you're looking at uh, the JPEG and you're shooting uh, RAW plus fine, you're only looking at a histogram of the actual JPEG rather than the RAW file associated with that um, which definitely does have better dynamic range. Uh, so that's actually another primary reason of having a light. You're going to spend countless thousands of dollars on a professional landscape camera but you don't squeeze all the potential dynamic range out of the camera. I mean, you don't have to do HDR photography to get really beautiful high dynamic range images if you have the camera that's able to capture that but you don't squeeze all the dynamic range that is capable of 
because you don't utilize the full capabilities of that camera. It's the same reason someone buy like a $3,000 camera, but they only shoot JPEGs. It's like, well, you shouldn't have really bought a $3,000 camera. You should have got something that's like about six or $700 and just shot JPEGs. That camera is capable of a lot more. You need to learn how to use Lightroom and actually extract all the potential out of the shots that you took that uh, would be captured in RAW. You shouldn't. People should not be afraid uh, to shoot RAW and to edit RAW files. Even if they don't know how to use Lightroom, you should still shoot RAW files and to save them and edit them later. Hard drives, hard drives and hard drive space per uh, gigabyte and, uh, and uh, per terabyte is extremely cheap now, so nobody has an excuse not to be shooting RAW plus fine, even if they don't currently uh, process uh, raw files, which there are a lot of people out there, and they've told me as much that do do that. I just realized that noise is just not shadow noise. Specifically, it is bad SNR, signal to noise ratio. Every sensor and every camera, whether it's micro four thirds, APS-C, or full frame, craves a saturation. Not saturation to the point of blowing the highlights, but saturation. This is the reason why flash photography and stroboscopic work is, uh, studio strobe work is so much better than a really good lens. You can get always a lot better results out of a crappy lens and a speed light or a studio strobe than you can out of the very best lens using natural light. Obviously there are exceptions to that rule. I mean that's a general statement of fact. It's not written in stone, but it is generally an extremely accurate statement because using a studio strobe or a light meter, most people use light meters for obvious reasons, very handy, portable, so on and so forth, you get true sensor saturation. You're able to eliminate out that noise. It gives you separation between your foreground and your background. That's why, you know, people complain about, you know, shots that look like snapshots that are taken with a super expensive camera and lens because they just lack saturation. They just look like a, you know, a really high resolution freaking snapshot. It's because everything is about lighting. It's not about having the best camera lens. And the importance of thing, right after your brain comes lighting, then comes the lens, and then comes the camera way down on the rung of the ladder. So just know that about noise. A lot of people only think noise exists in one place, but exists in a lot of places. But the simple answer is it's not just in the shadows, it's in bad signal to noise ratios. So and that's why sensor saturation and exposing to the right is so important, generally speaking. You don't have to expose to the right. I mean, if you want a mostly dark image and that's what the composition calls for, fine. You know, some of the best images in the world that I love are grainy images. You know, it's about the image, you know. It could be a technically perfect image, but it could be a shitty image that nobody gives a damn about, right? Um, thanks so much for watching. I uh, hope you learned something. If not, then woe on me, right? <laughs>